A band of snow developing across most of central and eastern Kentucky. An updated call for snowfall is straight ahead. Winter weather is likely overnight tonight, and regional road crews are preparing now to keep the streets safe. And the NTSB has released new details on what led to the crash that killed a family in western Kentucky, leaving only one young survivor. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon to you. Amber Philpott and Sam Dick reporting. The weekend is here and many areas could get the first measurable snow of this new year. And of course, that could mean nasty road conditions in many towns. That's why it is a first alert severe weather day. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking what's in store. Chris, you wanted a little bit of snow. We got some out there. <laughs> you know what? It is long overdue, though. I, normally by this time, we've had several snows. Yeah, it has snowed, but it snowed in November. Since then, it's been relatively snow. Snowless across the bluegrass state, seeing some wet snow right now flying in Lexington and beginning to accumulate on the grassy surfaces, the rooftops beginning to turn white in some cases. And as the sun gets lower on the horizon, we're going to see snow begin to really start to stick over the next several hours. Right on cue, talked about this yesterday on Defender. A very healthy band of snow is now developing from around Bowling Green through the Lexington Metro and then along and north of Interstate 64 toward Moorhead and Ashland. That will be the zone that we watch for as we go through the evening and into the wee hours of the morning for some of the snows to intensify. And that's the area that'll pick up the greatest concentration of accumulation. So, right along Interstate 64, back into the Lexington Metro, and even for areas here, when you look at your radar, you look at radar on our uh, WKYT weather app, you're going to see the colors that may not be corresponding exactly with what's going on where you are. That's because Defender is color coding everything based on the temperatures. We're Getting snow falling with thermometers above the freezing mark. So it's a heavy wet snow that is coming down. Now, I've highlighted this area from southwest to northeast for this developing band of moderate to heavy snow that is already now beginning to set up. It's going to be one of those evenings to where you're tracking snowflakes that may be bigger than quarters up to half dollar size in some cases. So this particular area will have the greatest impact from snow on the tune of maybe one. Local two, maybe as much as three inches. That will create some slick roads as the sun sets and especially as temperatures go below freezing. So, guys, this isn't a big time event by any means, but it's hitting on a Friday evening when a lot of folks are going to be out traveling. Temperatures are going to go below freezing, and with a wet snow that continues to fall, we'll see some icy spots developing as the evening wears on. As Chris showed you there, parts of the bluegrass have already seen some light snow today, and road crews are already preparing for the possibility of even more snow tonight. WKYT's meteorologist Mike Linden talked to road crews today who say that with this mild weather so far this season, they now have a surplus of salt. It's our top story at 4:30. For the first time in 2015, the chance for winter weather is here. We're already seeing some very light wintry mix in the state of Kentucky, but regional road crews are preparing now for the chance for those wintry conditions to continue overnight. We spoke to several road crews across the state today, and they all say their salt trucks are filled and ready to go. Most counties have a surplus of salt compared to last year, thanks to the mild conditions so far this winter. In Lincoln County, crews are pre treating the roads with salt brine today in anticipation of the wintry mix and the development of ice overnight. You've got to stay prepared all the time, especially right in this area, you know. And we've been fortunate this year that we normally have several, like last year, we had several snows by now. Several road crews that I spoke with this afternoon say their salt is in good supply and their drivers will remain on call all evening long if need be. In Fayette County, Mike Linden, WKYT. And remember, you can always track severe weather and the school closings when you are away from your TV. On WKYT.com, you can take control of an interactive First Alert Defender and zoom into your neighborhood. You can also download the WKYT First Alert Defender radar app for your iPad or smartphone. Just search for WKYT in your app store. And be sure to help us track the snowfall across Kentucky this winter. Just send us your photos and videos using the hashtag WKYTRulesWinter. Police are searching for answers. After a Bell County woman was found dead inside a home early this morning. Morgan Lentis is tracking that investigation. She joins us now from the scene with more. 
Investigators are still trying to piece together what happened here along Old Bell High Road in the early morning hours of Friday that left a woman dead. Kentucky State Police were called to this trailer just after midnight Friday morning. That's where they found 55 year old Deborah Baker dead. Detectives are not releasing many details at this time, but they confirmed they are investigating her death as a murder. Our troopers arrived and determined that uh, there was foul play of the death of a female. A neighbor told us they believe Baker was at the home visiting family members. Investigators have not determined a motive as of yet. Kentucky State Police in Harlan are asking for your help. So if you have any information that could be helpful in this case, you're asked to call Post 10 in Harlan. Reporting in Bell County, I'm Morgan Lentis, WYMT Mountain News. And police tell us they do not have any leads in the case right now. Funeral services will be held tonight to remember a man found murdered in his home. 40 year old Todd Schumacher died on Sunday. Investigators say that his boyfriend and roommate, Matthew Donahue, stabbed him to death in their Lamont Drive home. Schumacher's visitation and funeral will be held from 5 to 8 tonight. It's happening right now at the Clark Legacy Center in Brandon Crossing. The community donated more than $12,000 to a memorial fund set up by Schumacher's family to help with funeral expenses. A heavyweight, a legend in Kentucky politics will be remembered this weekend. Wendell Ford was a Kentucky governor and represented the Commonwealth in Washington as a U.S. Senator. Governor Bashir has ordered flags at all state office buildings to be lowered to half staff through Tuesday in Ford's honor. He will lie in state in the Capitol Rotunda starting at 11 Sunday morning. His memorial service will be at 3 Sunday afternoon. Ford's funeral will be Tuesday morning at First Baptist Church in Owensboro. We have more on Wendell Ford's legacy on WKYT.com. The preliminary investigation into the Western Kentucky plane crash that killed an Illinois family earlier this month has now been released. Seven-year-old Sailor Gutzler was the sole survivor. The crash killed her father, mother, sister, and cousin. The NTSB's preliminary report says the pilot contacted air traffic control at 5.50 p.m. to report problems with both engines. He said he had an airport within sight and that the right engine had stopped producing power. When the air traffic controller cleared the pilot for approach, the pilot said he he could no longer see the airport. After asking for the airport common traffic advisory frequency, the pilot was never heard from again. We'll have more from the report coming up on WKYT News at 5:30. Lexington police are investigating a robbery at the Waffle House on North Broadway near the interstate. Just before 5 this morning, a man showed a gun while another man jumped over the counter and demanded cash. They ran off into a nearby neighborhood. The owner says this is not the first time they've been robbed. He hopes security cameras will help catch these robbers. We have, um, we have really good footage of the incident. Um, we have some, we've upgraded our camera system, uh, so we get some really good digital access to what, what happened. So uh, we'll, we'll get that information to the police today. And there were customers inside the store at the time of the robbery. No one, though, was hurt. We have some new information this afternoon on a shooting in northern Kentucky. Covington police now say that one person has died after being shot in a home. A second person is in the hospital. It happened overnight in Covington near Route 16 and Hands Pike. Family members say a woman and her children were in the home when people burst in and began shooting. Police have identified at least one suspect in that case. They have not released information on the victims. Police say a burglar targeted a group of veterans. Someone broke into the American Legion on Man of War Place overnight. Lexington police say the crime was discovered this morning by a cleaning crew. They say someone broke into several offices and ransacked the place, but police are not sure what was actually stolen. A Kentucky teacher who was fired and then reinstated after dragging a student down the hall is now facing legal trouble. Ashley Silas is charged with a misdemeanor assault. The incident at a Bullitt County Elementary School was caught on camera. The principal fired Silas, but she appealed the decision and was allowed to keep her job. Attorneys say it's unlikely that Silas will receive any jail time. Well, it is all the talk, that yeah. is for sure. It is the city's newest grocery store, and it has some unique features, including rooftop parking, below ground storage, and even a walk in beer cave. I don't think I've ever been so excited about a Kroger opening, yeah. so that's what it is. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about at that new Kroger on Euclid Avenue. Hey, Deanne.
Hey, good afternoon, guys. We've already checked out the escalators, the elevator. How often do you get to like go to a grocery store and you ride up and down on an elevator? And then the beer cave. Don't forget the beer cave. After you've done that, move on over here because before you go grocery shopping, you can actually stop in and have dinner at two of the different food trucks that are located at Kroger here. Very cool things happening at our new Kroger on Euclid Avenue. We have Michelle Cummins with us, and it's just almost unbelievable to hear all that's happening in here until you're here and see it for yourself. Oh yeah, it's almost like you're in a dream, and then you come in and you're like, "Am I at a Kroger or yeah. where am I at?" So it's really cool. Is this really a grocery store? <laughs> Talk about the different items that you guys have in here. Not only are you offering for customers, but unique experiences for them as well. Well, absolutely. You know, we have Starbucks in here, which we didn't have when the store closed. But over in our deli, we have more of a food court setup. So now you can come over and get some beef brisket or some barbecue uh, or even ribs. Um, we have made-to-order pizzas, which have been a hit um, with the students. Especially and uh, made to order sandwiches. And then, of course, we have our two food trucks, we're just awesome. Um, so, you can get some Greek food or some crates, depending on what mood you're in. We have a cupcake station over in Bakery, which you can build your own cupcake. Oh, what? Say that again. A cupcake station. <laughs> Don't say it too loud in case my kids are listening. A cupcake station uh, here in the grocery as well. And I always say you should fill up before you go grocery shopping. Well, you don't need to fill up here. You can do it while you're here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. You also have parking, rooftop parking. Oh, yeah. You can go up the ramp on the side of the building, and you can go up where we have about 120 parking spots on top, and then come back down. And you have yet another level underneath. Right, we have a basement, and that's where we do all the production so that we can save all of our sales floor to provide more items for our shoppers. Is this the way that groceries are going these days? I mean, is this, did you all model this after some other state that's doing this? No, not really. I mean, it really depends on the area and the space that we have. We have some two level stores, but nothing really that has all three. All right, and we want to hit again for UK students. What does this mean? This means that they can come spend their mom and dad's money on their plus account here <laughs> at Kroger. So come on out. I'm sorry, mom and dad, but good for you, UK students, right? Right. All right, come check out the brand new Kroger located on Euclid Avenue here in Lexington. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about. Happy Friday. Cupcakes. You just uh, can't wait to get there. You I know. told me about that earlier. I was like, oh, that's just up my alley. Mm -hmm. All right. CBS has a new Supergirl and Rihanna taking control of her image. Suzanne Marquez has those stories and more in today's Eye on Entertainment. Rihanna has won a legal battle against a fashion retailer using her image on a t shirt. A British appeals court upheld a ruling that Topshop cannot sell clothing with Rihanna's picture without her approval. We're getting a first look at what Tina Fey has been up to. Fey co created and produced a new Netflix series, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. You can either curl up in a ball and die, or you can stand up and say, We're different and you can't break us. Actress Ellie Kemper plays Kimmy Schmidt, a young woman who starts a new life in New York City after escaping an underground cult. The show also stars 30 Rock alumni Jane Krakowski and Titus Burgess. All 13 episodes are available March 6th on Netflix. Amazon is celebrating its Golden Globe success with free episodes of Transparent. My whole life I've been dressing up like a man. All 10 episodes will be available this Saturday. And CBS has picked its Supergirl, actress Melissa Benoist, who's in the upcoming film Danny Collins, will star as Kara Zorel. It's the first superhero show on CBS in 25 years. And that's your Eye on Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. All right, we're seeing some of that big flakes yeah. and wet snow out there this afternoon. You said a minute ago it's pretty. I yeah. agree with you. It is kind of pretty out there, uh, Chris. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't cause any travel troubles. That'll be the concern, guys, because we're already down to 32 right now into Lexington. Last night, if you were watching us at 11, we hit the trend that today was going to end up being colder than what all the computer models, your apps were going to be telling you. And that is indeed the case today. We barely hit the mid-30s. And now we're down to freezing as a mixture of mainly snow and a touch of sleet that is out there. But boy, somewhere in the distance is Hamburg Pavilion. What will happen now, we're getting a heavier band of some snow moving into Lexington. So the flakes are going to become massive on us here over the next little bit. You may have some half dollar size snowflakes. This is a very pronounced line or band of moderate to heavy snow that is now taking aim 
at the Lexington Metro. So this corridor from southwest to northeast, guys, is right on top of the Bluegrass region. That'll be the prime corridor for a one to three inch snowfall, a slushy wet snow that, uh, as Amber was talking about, is going to be pretty. It likes to stick to everything. I call it a postcard snow that we'll be seeing out there this evening into tonight. All right, Chris, thank you. Deflated toys and a mysterious sea creature. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. An Indianapolis radio station is getting in on the deflate gate action. The disc jockeys are asking listeners to drop off underinflated toys, and they plan to send them to the Patriots headquarters in Massachusetts. The DJs say they're just trying to have some lighthearted fun with a story that has a lot of people talking. All right, this looks like something that might be an alien, but it has more in common with Jurassic Park. It's a rare frilled shark that was caught by a fisherman off Australia's coast. It has a body like an eel with a mouth full of needle like teeth. The six foot long frill shark is sometimes described as a fish fossil. Some say it dates back more than 80 million years. All I know is I don't want that swimming anywhere near me. Can you imagine that Ooh. coming at you? Yeah, All right. Creepy. Art of nature out there. Thanks for joining us. Much more to come now at 5 o'clock here on.